I uh, wanted to do an outdoor video today. I got off of work and uh, I'm looking out the window and it's been looking nice. Still looks nice. Can't find a public place where I can do a video without a bunch of people tripping over me. Oh well. Happy New Year, folks. Chapter 15 of First Nephi. And it came to pass that after I, Nephi, that's why they call this the book of Nephi. Had been carried away in the spirit. Basically his long three-part, well, three-chapter vision. Uh, winded down <laughs> and ended with a whimper. And he's just coming to his senses. Uh, after I, Nephi, had been carried away in the spirit... And seen all these things. Yeah, I tried mushrooms too. I returned to the tent of my father. That kind of day. This makes me want to read a holy book. This one's full of holes. And it came to pass that I, just I, I don't know who this guy is. What if somebody else took over? <laughs> I beheld my brethren, and they were disputing one with another concerning the things which my father had spoken unto them. For he had truly spake many great things unto them, which were hard to be understood, <laughs> save a man should inquire of the Lord. And they, being hard in their hearts, they for, therefore they did not look unto the Lord as they ought. <clears throat> and now I, Nephi, was grieved because of the hardness of their hearts, and also because of the things which I had seen, and knew they must unavoidably come to pass. I'm just going to leave the lid off. I don't care what tense it's in. <laughs> it would come to pass. Uh. Yes, must unavoidably come to pass because of the great wickedness of the children of men. We just can't help it, can we? Must have been made that way. And it came to pass that I was overcome because of my afflictions. For I considered that mine afflictions were great above all, you whiner, <laughs> because of the destructions of my people. Yeah, that's only happened to you, Nephi. Stop being a biatch. He even has <laughs> parentheses. <laughs> my people. No, that's an A, excuse me. Bad eyesight. Should be wearing my glasses, but it looks corny on video, so hope you don't mind suffering with me. <sighs> For I had beheld their fall. See, it was terrible because he saw it all in his so uh, Irwin Allen flash forward. Must have been how Nostradamus saw things, huh? And it came to pass that after I had received strength, I spake unto my brethren, desiring to know 
of them the cause of their disputations. And they said, Behold, we cannot understand the words of our father, words which our father hath spoken un, uh, concerning the natural branches of the olive tree, and also concerning the Gentiles. Kind of like Samson's little riddle. <laughs> yeah, only he can get that one. Anyway, concerning the branches of the olive tree and also concerning the Gentiles. That's mighty wide of you. I mean, thank you. You know, well, I guess we almost match up. This is so bigoted. <laughs> this is a 1966. I wonder if there's been changes. <laughs> it's got it written in gold. Yeah. And I said unto them, Have ye inquired of the Lord? And they said unto me, We have not, for the Lord maketh no such thing known unto us. <coughs> I was waiting for that one. Behold, I said unto them, How is it that ye do not keep the commandments of the Lord? Which ones did they break? He didn't mention, except for their whining. How is it that ye will perish because of the hardness of your hearts? Now you're laying it on just a little bit thick. I mean, you're trying to win these big brothers over, Nephi, and I hate you already. <laughs> I think you're a whiny little weasel. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Do you not remember the things which the Lord hath said? If ye will not harden your hearts and ask me in faith, believing that ye shall receive with diligence in keeping my commandments, surely these things shall be made known unto you. So all you have to do is believe with all your heart and you're going to believe. That makes perfect fucking sense. Kind of works for a little while, but you have to keep getting re your batteries, faith batteries recharged. Or some people just go, whoo hoo. <laughs> I've had a hard day, excuse me. Do you not remember the things which the Lord hath said? If ye will. Not harden your wait if ye will not harden your hearts and ask in faith. Okay, I get it. With diligence, lots of diligence, in keeping my commandments, surely these things shall be made known unto you, and you, and you, and you. <laughs> Behold, I say unto you that the house of Israel was compared to an olive tree. By the Spirit of the Lord, which was in our fathers. He means that all their brothers, and that's their dad. He just said it wrong. <laughs> By the Spirit which was in our fathers. <laughs> and behold, we are not broken off. Wait, are we not broken off from the house of Israel? And are we not a branch of the house of Israel? And now the thing which our father meaneth concerning the grafting in of the natural branches through the fullness of the Gentiles is that in the latter days, when our seed shall have dwindled in unbelief, doing all I can, brother. Yea, for the space of many years and many generations after the Messiah shall manifest in body unto the children of men, then shall the fullness of the gospel of the Messiah come unto the Gentiles, and from the Gentiles unto the remnant of our seed. See, they're like writing this, uh, you know, 
what the 600 BC <laughs> it's a little later by now I guess it doesn't seem like it though it seems like it's going on forever good thing I found a way to make it interesting all right and in that day shall the remnant of our seed know that they are of the house of Israel. I wonder who that is. <laughs> and you can be one too. And that they are the covenant people of the Lord, and they shall and then shall they know and come to the knowledge of their forefathers and also to the knowledge of the gospel of their Redeemer. Which was which was ministered unto their fathers by him. Wherefore they shall come to the knowledge of their Redeemer and the very points of his doctrine that they may know how to come unto him and be saved. I hope you're writing this down. This is important shit. And then at that day will they not rejoice and give praise unto their everlasting God, their rock and their salvation? Yea, at that day will they not receive the strength and nourishment from the true vine? Yea, will they not come unto the true fold of God? Behold, I say unto you, yea, <laughs> they shall be remembered again among the house of Israel. They shall be grafted in, being a natural branch of the olive tree, into the true olive tree. <sighs> All this borrowed uh, apocalyptic imagery, it's pretty pitiful. And this is what our Father meaneth. And he meaneth that it will not come to pass. I knew it was going to come to pass. I was ready for it. Until after they are scattered by the Gentiles. And he meaneth that it shall come by the way of the Gentiles, that the Lord will show his power unto the Gentiles. So we don't need those Jew guys anymore. <laughs> we got the new Jews in Salt Lake City, or whatever the fuck they call it. Latter-day Saints, excuse me. Uh, I'm just trying to figure this out. If there's any Mormons watching, you know, you might correct me on anything. It's fine. Channel's wide open. For the very cause that he shall be rejected of the Jews, or of the house of Israel, wherefore our Father hath not spoken of our seed alone, but also of all the house of Israel, pointing to the covenant which should be fulfilled in the latter days, which covenant the Lord made to our father Abraham, saying, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, spake much unto them concerning these things, yea, I spake unto the concerning of the restoration of the Jews in the latter days. Because we need them in the Holy Land so they can do their part. All of them. And then rapture time. Latter days. And I did rehearse unto them the words of Isaiah. Boy, does he like Isaiah. Huge chunks of this book is just pure Isaiah. I'm not sure how I'm going to work that part. Isaiah doesn't really use and then it came to pass very much. But we'll drive off of that bridge when we get to it. <sighs> yeah. The words of Isaiah, which are just chunks of uh, 
Nephi. But, you know, he didn't have room for other shit, but he's quoting Isaiah and gold. And, uh, wait, who spake, Isaiah, who spake concerning the restoration of the Jews or the house of Israel? <clears throat> and after they were restored, they should no more be confounded, neither should they be scattered again. Yeah, we want them all in one little box. I think that sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? And it came to pass right in the middle of the paragraph. <clears throat> that I did speak many words unto my brethren that they were pacified and did humble themselves before the Lord. I guess he softened their hearts. And it came to pass that they did speak unto me again, saying, What meaneth this thing which our father saw in a dream? What meaneth the tree which he saw? And I said unto them, It was a representation of the tree of life. Gee, didn't we get this explanation in chapter 11? Or something like that, around that area. And they said unto me, What meaneth the rod of iron which our fathers saw that led to the tree? And I said unto them that it was the word of God. And whoso would hearken unto the word of God, and would hold fast unto it, they would never perish. <laughs> Neither could the temptations and the fiery darts of the adversary overpower them unto blindness, to lead them away to, into, uh, to destruction. <clears throat> Boy, I was like pushing right behind. I had to hurry. Wherefore I, Nephi, did exhort them to give heed unto the word of the Lord. Yea, I did exhort them with all the energies of my soul and with all the faculty which I possessed that they would give heed to the word of God. And remember to keep his commandments always in all things. And they said unto me, What meaneth the river of water <laughs> which our fathers saw? And I said unto them that the water which my fathers saw was filthiness. Just failed to mention it. <sighs> and so was his mind swallowed up in other things that he beheld not the filthiness of the water? <laughs> he told his vision the first time. Well, he's writing on gold, you know. I mean, how do you go back? I mean, you, what do you, they don't have gold out, do they? You know? <sighs> and I said unto them that it was an awful gulf which separated the wicked from the tree of life because it'll get icky water all over them, uh, and also from the saints of God. And I said unto them that it was a representation of that awful hell, which the angel said unto me, was prepared for the wicked. And I said unto them that our father also saw that the justice of God did also divide the wicked from the righteous. So stay out of Salt Lake City, you sinners. And the brightness thereof was like unto the brightness of a flaming fire. You know, that's the best kind of fire. The car, you know, flaming kind of fire. <laughs> flaming fire. <laughs> the brightness of a flaming fire which ascendeth up unto God forever and ever and hath no end which you just said forever and ever and it has no end <laughs> this is so good
<sighs> okay. And, and they said unto me, Doeth this thing mean the torment of the body in a day of probation? Or doeth it mean, doth it mean, <laughs> the final state of the soul after the death of the temporal body, which doth it speak of, wait, or doth it speak of the things which are temporal? Fuck, I need a drink. I have to read all that shit. And it came to pass that I said unto them that it was a representation of things both temporal and spiritual. For the day should come that they must be judged of their works, yea, even the works which are done by the temporal body in their days of probation. <laughs> Wherefore, if they should die in their wickedness, they must be cast off also, as to the things which are spiritual, which are pertaining to righteousness. Wherefore, they should be brought to stand before God, <coughs> to be judged of their works. And if their works have been filthiness, they must needs be filthy. And if they be filthy, it must needs be that they cannot dwell in the kingdom of God. If so, the kingdom of God must be filthy also, if they allow such riffraff in. But they don't. So it's clean. <sighs> but behold, I say unto you, the kingdom of God is not filthy. And how dare you suggest it? <laughs> Streets of gold, baby. <laughs> this could be like, you know, one cobblestone in heaven. <sighs> and there is a place prepared, yea, even that awful hell of which I have spoken. And the devil is the foundation of it. Wherefore, the final state of the souls of men is to dwell in the kingdom of God or to be cast out because of that justice which I have spoken. Wherefore the wicked are rejected from the righteousness and also from the tree of life, whose fruit is most precious and most desirable of all other fruits, yea, and it is the greatest of all the gifts of God. And thus I spake unto my brothers, Amen. Biatch. Nephi laid the smack down on his brothers. The spiritual smack, that smack down. Uh, that wasn't a very satisfying chapter, but it seemed like a lot of repetition there. But I mean, he could have just made one little reference in the, the next chapter that he straightened his brothers out, and they seemed okay for a while. Oh. Mm. Still cold. <sighs> anyway, that was chapter 15. And um, it does point out that there is a ton of Isaiah in this book to come. And I'm not sure I'll, how I'll address that, because I'm planning to go through the whole book, but I'd rather go through just this original shit, because most of the Isaiah is almost verbatim. So I don't know. Maybe I'll read through the Isaiah, I guess. But, I mean, there's really hardly anything in the way of in, it, they, it came to pass. I mean, I don't think so, anyway. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Anyway, on that note, peace out.